So this next room we're going to go into is called the reverberation chamber, which is the opposite of the anechoic room. It's got very hard walls in there that's used to reflect sound. So we'll go in there now. There's a bit of a step down. And you can have a look around the room. And what you'll notice, you may probably hear, is that there's a lot of echoes. And the reason there's a lot of echoes in this room is you can have a look around and see that the walls are very hard. There's just concrete walls and they're painted to stop being sound absorbed into the walls. And so sound is reflected off all those walls uh, kept in the room. And you can also see that there's these kind of funny panels hanging from the roof. They're used to redirect or reflect sound into various directions so we get a fairly even sound field. That's the intention of it anyway, is that sound will become a very homogenized or mixed throughout the room. You'll also see that above us, I'll step back a little bit so you can see, just above us there's also this rotating diffuser it's called. And what that does is there's a motor in the roof and it'll spin this thing around and sound will hit one portion of the, the, the diffuser and reflect off in a different direction and then the, the diffuser will rotate slightly more and then sound will bounce off in a different direction. So again, the intention is to try to create this kind of mixed mastered kind of sound field in here so it's um, average throughout the entire space. You'll also be able to see that there's this hole, a giant hole in the wall there, um, and that is connected to another one of these reverberation chambers. And what that is used for is we'd put a, a partition in between the, that section there in the hole in the wall, uh, and it could be something like um, a, building, a, a building partition, maybe a brick wall, or a plasterboard wall, or windows, or doors, or whatever we like, interested in doing, and we'd measure what the sound reduction is between one room and, the, and this receiver room here. So what we're in at the moment is called the receiver room. Uh, it's a much larger reverberation room. There's a room on the other side there that's called our source room. And what we do in that room is we create a very loud sound field and that will hit and strike this uh, test partition, the wall or whatever you're interested in measuring. And then sound will eventually come through that wall uh, into this room here and then we measure what the sound level is in this, in this room here and from those two measurements we can figure out what's the sound reduction or, or transmission loss as we call it in acoustic terms of that particular panel. And that's, so that's one application for it. The other application that we use it for is you might be able to see on the ground here there's a red rectangle and what we do there is put some material in this rectangle and we would measure what the sound absorption coefficient of the material is. So we might measure, um, for example, acoustic absorptive tiles, and we put a very loud sound field in this room, uh, and then we turn off the sound field, and then we see how long it takes for the sound level to de decay in the room, and we know that, that the reason why the sound field has decayed is because that sound has been absorbed mostly by this um, material that we've put in, into our rectangle. And so from that, from those measurements, we can figure out what's the sound absorption coefficient of our material. So that's very important to know for acoustics if we're trying to uh, change what the absorption in a room is. So, you know, we, we would like to have some rooms to be very quiet or acoustically dead, we might say. Um, and so we put some material in, in the room to, to help improve the acoustics and re reduce the amount of reverberation. The other thing we would use it for is measuring the sound power field of an object. Um, or sound power level on objects. So we might have something like a motor or a, a, a dishwasher or something like that. And we want to know how much sound is generated by that object. And what we do is we put the sound, the sound source in this room, we turn it on and we measure what the average sound level is. And from that we can determine what the sound power level of the object is. They're the main uses for it. So it's, it's got three main uses. One is the transmission loss. The other one is the sound absorption coefficient, and the third use is measuring the sound power level of an object. That's about it. All right.